Hi guys, it's Lynn here. Hope everybody is having a fantastic day. Now today guys, in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about the five most easy cacti to grow for beginners. And first of all, I'm gonna start off with Echinopsis. And I'm gonna show you some examples of Echinopsis that I have here in my collection and also why I think they're great for beginners. And I'm gonna do that with all the five different ones. Now, as I say, starting off now with Echinopsis, which is the majority of all of these on here, not these, <laughs> but these ones here. As you can see, it is a very, very large genus and there is so many different varieties of Echinopsis. And it sort of, sort of falls into a couple of different categories. Uh, most common with the Echinopsis will be these type here. Sometimes they're nicknamed the sea urchin or the domino cacti because of the, um, the spot, the, the lovely sort of areola arrangements on these, particularly with these ones here, which is Echinopsis subdenudata. But there's many, many different types, which is here. This one is not um, <laughs> Echinopsis, but this one here, I'm just gonna show you what we've got, these variety here. Now they're very, very easy plants to, to grow. They're very common as well. They're very easy to find in most garden centers. Um, the most common one would possibly be the Echinopsis, um, commonly known as also the peanut cacti as well, comes under also Camasarius. And it can be a little bit confusing with the genus names because some people will see under many different names. But when I say Echinopsis, I'm covering also um, Camasarius, the, also known as the peanut cacti, which I'll just show you. If you're not familiar, this might be commonly seen like this very common plants that you see at garden centres and all of them at the back there and nicknamed peanut cacti because of how the little stems are um, sort of resemble sort of peanuts or <laughs> well, they're supposed to anyway and um, also comes under the echinopsis and also the more commonly seen echinopsis and um, more the global globaler type of cacti too very common one that you often see is the echinopsis subdenudata nicknamed the domino cactus because obviously as I say the areoles the lovely spot in there um, gorgeous um, beautiful plants even when out of flower now this type of genus echinopsis is a great one I recommend for beginners because it is very easy to get into flower um, as long as you can give them a cool and dry winter rest period they will flower very abundantly from spring spring right through to summer right even into fall and fall autumn and look at that lovely big but big bud on there again echinopsis and the these plants as well are very cold hardy as i say they can take almost my well they can take minus temperatures if they are kept dry and away from excess damp we keep these in our polytunnel and we do have a polytunnel heater that comes on if the uh, temperature drops below five because here in northern ireland it's a very damp climate so we prefer to keep them a little bit warmer but if you have more of an arid environment these echinopsis can take very cool temperatures so they're great very hardy plants as well and as I say if you can give them a cool dry winter rest period um, ideally a temperature below 10 C uh, 50 degree Fahrenheit and a sunny window sill even in the winter because that's when they like to produce get all their chlorophyll and produce all their energy for producing flowers in the spring and summer and keep them dry um, they will flower abundantly and as a very easy cactus very recommended for beginners and pretty easy to get in a lot of the garden centers and they're relatively very affordable as well many different varieties the colors are absolutely spectacular on them on the flowers I should say colors on the flowers are beautiful and the, the only downside is the flowers don't last very long <laughs> they only last a day or two but they are breathtakingly beautiful as I say very easy cactus to grow cool dry winter rest period and um, lots of um, lots of sunshine and they will flower abundantly for you and very 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 easy cactus to grow so that's the first one echinopsis and when I'm saying these names just type in if you google echinopsis cactus uh, cacti it'll come up with all the different varieties so get a bit more familiar because it would take me forever to show you all the different types as you see here I have a lot of different ones in our collection so that's the first one echinopsis the second one that's a very easy plant to grow for beginners, and it's also a cactus I think is a little bit forgotten about these days, but they're great for beginners. And again, very much like Echinopsis, they're brilliant. And that will be Raybusia, the Raybusia uh, cactus family. And I'm gonna show you a few examples here. This will be Raybusia here. They're beautiful and um, beautiful compact plants. Um, more as well, Raybusia, also Raybusia. Uh, Rebusha there 
absolutely beautiful, beautiful plants. Another Rebusha. And I'm just going to show you, so to make yourselves familiar as well, that is also Silco Rebusha. Again, Rebusha a genus, but the Silco has the more sort of beautiful sort of um, areole spine arrangements there. But still part of all the Rebusha family. Again, Rebusha. And I'll just show you, because these are also, you do, you do see them in garden centres, but maybe not as much as you would see Echinopsis. That's Rebusha here, um, beautiful, beautiful um, clumping plant. And um, another one as well. They're, they're lovely, lovely plants, and these are very similar, well, exactly the same type of care as you would give the Echinopsis also. A cool, dry winter rest period and a sunny position, and they will flower abundantly. As you can see, it's been flowering, uh, loads of the old flower heads there. Flower abundantly from spring onwards, but you have to give them a cool and dry winter rest period. If you've got Rebusha um, cactus plants in a warm, sunny room in the winter, it's they may not flower because they really do need a winter rest um, but if you can provide that again I keep them at above 5 celsius which will be 41 degrees Fahrenheit but um, ideally if you can keep them below the 10 the 10 celsius 10 celsius 50 degree Fahrenheit then you should be okay to get in getting blooms um, from spring to summer but these are very cold hardy as well if you can keep them dry they will survive uh, many degrees um, of cold weather um, fantastic and very abundantly flowering as well so I highly recommend Rebusha so that's the next the next genus then just show you if you're not familiar again there's so many in the in my collection that I'll be there forever if I was to show you here so just to familiar familiarize yourself with what they look like they're clumping plants they're also brilliant as well if you're short on space because if you're growing in an apartment or you don't have a lot of space I mean we, we're lucky we have this polytunnel but we still as you can see there's only so much space so it's great when we buy Rebusha cacti because they're clumping plants they don't grow um, they take a long long time to to even grow large and they're nice and compact I mean this this one here Babusha um, perplexa is absolutely, it has the most beautiful pink flowers on it. Hasn't flowered for a couple of years, but sometimes that's the way it goes. I think I need to give a bit of a repot and um, have a look at this one. But this one I have had for 25 years, and when I bought it, it was two little tiny, two little clumps like that, and that's how it's formed a lovely clump, or like a big mound of beautiful clumping heads over the 25 years. So, as you see, it's very slow growing when you think. So, great for apartments and saving space and again very cold winter hardy cactus too and abundantly flowering so that's the second one I recommend Ray Boucher and the third one then would be a puncher commonly known as the prickly pear cacti um, or um, yep the prickly pear the, this probably more known as that that it will be a puncher but um, there is again this is a massive massive humongous genus probably the puncher family um, would probably be the largest cactus plant family that you can get and you get many different parts of the puncher family as well you get the um, <laughs> the the tephro cactus and all the other different types there I'll just show there different varieties but they all sort of come under a puncher as I say it's a huge genus and the most common one would be um, this one here that the micro daces this is often commonly seen for sale in a lot of the garden centers this is the gold version here and that's the white version and here we have a bit of a crustate form there and the more deeper sort of brown colored spotting and this is the, the miniature version of Puncher Microdaisy's Minima, mini, <coughs> Minima as well. A, few cl a lovely clumpy plant. This one I've had for, gosh, well over 30, 35 years now. And again, I had it when it's just a little clump. And look at that, it's formed into a lovely, lovely clumping, lovely clumping a Puncher. And the reason why I'm recommending a puncher is because the majority of a punchers, now there are all, there's such a large genus that you have to look at each individual plant that you actually get because the care would vary differently. Some will be a lot more cold hardy than others. But in general, they're very cold hardy and very easy to grow. Again, give them a cool, dry winter rest period. Um, and they they like to overwinter cool and dry they can take very very low temperatures many can actually take below freezing even in um, damper climates they can take a lot more damp um, than a lot of other cacti can can as well and um, if 
they, the worst comes to worst and they do rot. The good thing with the punctures is because they produce all these pads, you just pull the pads off and repropagate. Sometimes I have to do that when these plants start to look a little bit leggy or a bit, a bit not looking as good at the base. I just take a few pads off, allow it to callus for a few days and then put them into sun. And they root really easy and they're great to give to friends as well. You know, if they say, oh, I love that, I love that to puncture, just pull a pad off, give them a pad and they root so easy and as I say they're amazing plants they're, they're actually one that you either love or hate they're the marmite of the cactus world I like to say you either love them or hate them personally bean hons love a punchers and um, they I think they're really great cacti for beginners they're very hardy and um, I say they do like to have a cool dry winter respite the only disadvantage with them is if you're growing them in cultivation in a fairly northern climate like me and Hans are here in Northern Ireland um, it's hard to get them to flower because they love very strong sunshine to produce flowers and I have had my punctures flower for me in the past when I lived in England because I lived in a bit more of a sunnier climate than where I am now in Ireland and they did flower for me but sadly since I've been here I don't get flowers on them but they will flower if you can provide the extra light but I don't grow these cacti for the flowers I grow them because I love the appearance of them and I just think they're incredible wacky plants and they are hardy and that's personally I think they're easy to grow if you're not so fussy about flowers then um, punctures a great great cacti and again care the same cool dry winter recipe they're like an extremely sunny position I say echinopsis here can definitely take a lot more of a shady position but a puncher the more sun you can give them and we have some more punches out in our yard as well um, because they are very sun loving plants um, so that's the next genus a puncher and as I say this is the most commonly the micro daisies beautiful 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 so that's the third one and now we're going to go on to the the fourth one here which will be gymnocalysium or gymnocalysium some people say gymnocalysium some people say gymnocalysium so i'm going to say which it's a bit like tomato and tomato now this is i'll show you what we've got here we've got a few different ones growing here in our collection not this one of course that's a little odd one that is a um, calanchoe mother of thousands i'll just take that down so i can show you all the um, gymnos we've got here up on there. Now Gymnocalysium again it's a very common cactus plant that you often see in a lot of garden centres. Very easy to grow and very abundantly flowering as well. They are fantastic and as long again you can give them a cool dry winter rest period and this is the same with all the, all the cactus I'm going to talk about now. Um, they will flower abundantly from spring and summer and when it comes to with the lighting with with gymnos I actually prefer to give them a bit more of a shadier spot now definitely not shade all desert type of cacti which are all these cacti here need maximum as much sun as you can give them especially if you live in a northern climate it really does depend on your environment um, I live here in Ireland and um, you know sun is quite rare so they do pretty good here in the polytunnel where they can get as much sunshine as possible but I do keep them on this side of the polytunnel because if I had them over on the back wall where the punctures are there that gets mostly sun all day when we do get the sun they tend to go a little bit yellow so gymnocalcium, gymnocalcium, whatever you want to say do prefer to have, they love sunshine but if you, you live in a place where it gets direct sunshine all day they do prefer, personally in my opinion, a tiny bit more shade so sunshine in the morning or sunshine in the afternoon if you're living in a very sunny climate if you're in a pretty northern, northern type of climate where sun isn't really that that strong anyway, um, especially in the winter time then they would be fine on a sunny window so to just bear that in mind I find they do tend to to go a little bit slightly yellow if they're in extreme strong sunshine which is rare here in Ireland and um, just show you what we've got here we've got some Gymnocalysium baldianums which these have um, lovely sort of ready flowers on them here as you can see that one's also coming into flower which is exciting it's another one again and this one is another Gymnocalysium here beautiful white flowers and lovely sort of deep red throat on it very easy to flower this one's also coming into flower for the first time 
very excited about this one because this one is Hans's that he's had for many, many years. He bought over from Sweden. Not been able to ID it until it actually flowers, but because it's coming into, into bud now, we'll be able to ID that. So that's exciting. And this one here is Jim Nocleus and Horsty, and that has beautiful pink flowers too. So just to, sh to say that Gymnoclisum is another genus I would highly recommend and as I say do google these names and it'll give you an idea of um, what plants cactus plants I recommend for beginners and I'm recommending ones that are easy to get in garden centers as well because no point in me recommending there's quite a few really easy cacti I think for beginners but they're very hard to find so um, I wouldn't really recommend them if it means you're gonna have to search hours on the internet and things like that but these are these should be pretty abundant in most garden centers and definitely online so again gymnoclisium there easy flowering and um beautiful beautiful easy cacti to grow now with the temperatures with these again most gymnoclisium can take again cold temperatures um, as long as they're kept dry during the winter and that's in general for most cacti unless you're growing you know the, the epiphytes like these but that's another thing altogether so um cold and dry cool and dry and gymnocalisiums they do like a i would ideally say about a minimum winter temperature about sort of five celsius seven celsius which is about the 41 to 45 degrees fahrenheit so um especially in the more northern hemisphere where it's a bit more colder and damper um the cold as i say isn't a problem with cacti it's more the damp the cooler the temperatures um and the damper the more likely they are to be rot prone so i like to keep these ideally above the five celsius 41 degrees fahrenheit um so just bear that in mind if you're growing these for the temperature but as i say gymnocalisium or gymnocalisium whatever you want to say very good recommended plant for beginners and now i'm going to go on to the um the last but not least and i'm saving this this genus till last because i personally think if somebody said to me they can only have one type of cactus genus in their collection i would definitely recommend this one guys and this is the mammillaria group of cactus plants and it is a very very large range of um, cactus plants um, it's a huge 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 genus but very 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 recommended for beginners and that's why I wanted to save this one till last and I'm going to talk a little bit about mammillaria um, which is sometimes nicknamed as the pin cushion cacti Mammillaria, very, very easy to grow. And I'll show you some of the ones that we have here. This one is, I just have to get the names out because I have so many to remember. The Mammillaria formosa. And um, talk a little bit about why Mammillarias tend to have this drooping habit because I'm always being asked this, but I'll come into that into a minute. These are different type of varieties of Mammillaria. Very, very, very um, popular cactus plant that you see in a lot of garden centres and uh, highly recommended for beginners. Probably the most people begin with this plant actually because it is so easily available and it comes in so many different types. It's a massive genus again different different types of mammillaria i mean this will be mammillaria here this will be mammillaria this one this one this one as you can see they all look so so different in appearance and these and that one there and uh, this one here uh, this there so they are so so varied but to try and keep this it's the last one here and the the big old favorite will be mammillaria different types now what i like about these cacti is that they again are very the majority of them if not nearly all of them if they keep them dry and cool can survive cool temperatures during the winter they flower abundantly from spring summer right even right up until the fall and they even flower i've even had quite a few they flower in winter um they're just pretty wonderful wonderful cacti certain types like this one is the mammillaria plumosa and this tends to flower in winter as well some of them are winter flowering but i i do tend to keep them all dry during the winter anyway and sometimes they will still flower because we overwinter these in our polytunnel which you know we keep cool and dry it doesn't seem to affect with the flowering this is beautiful because it has lovely lovely beautiful soft almost like cotton wool appearance this one is another one again the the, the mammillaria bomicino i think and it looks a bit similar in appearance but this has got tiny little hooks underneath this lovely cotton wool ball appearance so it will, it will stick to you so you have to be very careful um but absolutely now this is rebusha looks a bit mammillaria -like, but that's rebusha i covered that earlier so just turn your eyes off from that one don't get mixed up with that this is a mammillaria carmenera um beautiful beautiful brown uh, 
brown um, spines and they're not spiny but that's the only way to, to explain it you know well, the area holes are covered in lovely soft beautiful beautiful uh, spinach there and um, this one is this one will be Hans's this is mine these are known as the Mammillaria um, Mammillaria spinosimus nicknamed the the red-headed Irish man because the lovely red spines there and this one here I say is the Mammillaria famosa another one this is also Mammillaria um, Spinosima and Pico because that's the white wiry spines absolutely incredible again another Mamilaria there Mamilaria there all in, in little flowers beautiful um, spines again arrangement with it around the areoles there another Mamilaria Mamilaria there as well beautiful clumpy plants and what I like about Mamilaria is again they're very very free flowering the flowers are often very 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 tiny they form usually little little rings well all around the top of them sometimes you'll get one or two rings or sometimes they'll come around the whole of the plant they're very very long long living cactus plants as long as you can care for them and take care and don't um, overwater them obviously because the biggest problem and this is with all cacti in general is overwatering as i say cool and dry during the winter um mammillaria particularly like a cool dry winter rest period because that really encourages the flowering um they just burst into flower when you start to water them again in the spring and um absolutely very very large genus and a abundant with um with blooms when they, when they come into the into the growth period now the only there's two disadvantages with growing um, mammillarias personally in my opinion the first one would be that if you can't give them a cool and dry room to overwinter in or a greenhouse or um, a window that is not above heating they do tend to want to carry on growing during the winter and you often see um, a lot of mammillaria sometimes where they're a bit stretched at the top because they they're one of the cactus plants that i find if you can't give them a, a minimum of, of, of 10 celsius 50 degree fahrenheit above that degree they do want to still carry on growing so bear that in mind you'll end up with a bit stretchy tolerated plants and that's another video again because few people say why their plants grow stretched out it's because usually um, it's down to providing extra heat during the winter when they just want to rest and mammillarias do have a habit for that so cool and dry below 10 celsius or below um, but ideally above 5 celsius 41 degree fahrenheit um, these these mammillarias overwinter really well and then they can take pretty much plenty of water during the spring and summer as well, abundantly growing. Now, the second thing with these mammillaries, they do have a habit um, of leaning towards the side. Now, this one here is starting to grow a little bit onto the side. And in a lot of these type of plants, in their natural habitats, would actually grow very long, just leaning across. That's how they grow. But when you're growing them in cultivation in pots, it's not always practical to have them all leaning all over the side they get top heavy and they fall out but just bear in mind that is a natural growth pattern for a lot of mammillarias and i just have this one this does probably need a bit more of a bigger pot and a more a bit more of a heavier pot as well to stabilize it but i've got this leaning against here and it's supporting it but if you have um mammillarias that do sort of grow almost sausage shaped hanging over do offer them support you don't need to cut them it's really not necessary they grow like that and i think it adds character to them I think it really does add that type of individuality to cacti when they're growing all weird all over the place but that's just my opinion and um, it can be difficult sometimes if you cut them because they're growing all leaning over and try to reroute them again just leave them as they are I think so that's that mammillaria and as I say they're the five five cactus plants I highly recommend for beginners and do check them out guys if you're new to the hobby and you want to know what cacti to grow and um, thank you all so much for watching and guys if you want to know if you're new to the hobby and you want to know a little bit more about how to grow cacti and succulents do check out my website desertplantsofavalon.com and I want to send you loads of love heaps of happiness and tons and tons of cactus power from across the Emerald Isle. And until the next video, bye.